So I used a complicated, seemed to be complicated because I couldn't kept re having to re-remember which apps could do which, but a, an interweaving of one app through into another app and then back and forth to create these uh, layers essentially of um, of processes that created the clip and then these clips were put together as building blocks into iMovie which is where I added the audio and um, titles and uh, filters a couple of filters and yeah so what looks really easy and short and simple actually took a lot of time as we all know from building these so the apps I used were um, so I used some images that I took myself with my own camera. I used some images I found through Creative Commons Classrooms, just a couple. Um, I used screenshots of, that's the lovely thing about iPad, and I'm going to talk about more about that in a second, but it's so easy to quick to take a, a screenshot, even if it's an actual video playing, you can quickly take the screenshot and that seems to work. And then you can feed that again through another app and, and in and out. Uh, so the apps I used were um, Drawing Pad. So with the screenshots and the images and stuff I used, Drawing Pad, Plastic, a very, very cool app. You should check it out. I thought it was on that 50 Ways, but I must have found it uh, following some other links through the 50 Ways because I went back to look to see if it was on that list and it wasn't. But it's a, I think it's specifically an iPad app, uh, Plastic, Stop Motion Studio, and and then all together into iMovie. Um, so it was most accessible I found through iPad because like I said you can you can take the screenshot right there you can put it into the next app and manipulate it and I think it would be accessible even to kids this way I find that process a little bit more difficult with a laptop but maybe that's just because I, I like and use my my iPad more and have for many years but um, so for instance I will describe how I went through uh, a couple of the clips and I'm just going to flip my page because again I have a 50 year old's memory. Okay, so the scene where the teacher is getting Alice to sit in the chair uh, to give her the checklist. Um, that is actually a whole bunch of layers built up. So first of all I had to build the background by using some images from Creative Commons. I, If you use the app drawing pad, which is also a very cool app, I don't think it's been changed in a long time, but um, it's really useful for lots of different things. So if you use that as your paper background, that photo, um, then you can put the other photos on top and you can also draw on top. So then I use the crayon. So once I put the little photos in of the, the kids on the floor, because I needed a classroom picture that I could use a f had a floor space and a table space, and I didn't want it crowded with kids because the first time I did that, uh, my little animated figure looked like she was going to be stomping on kids, which would be a whole, whole different problem other than just spinning around the room. Um, so uh, I took that, uh, the blank back classroom background and put that as the paper and then added the other little images on top and you can size those and stuff and then stick them down in drawing pad. Then I use that as my backdrop, uh, save that in my camera roll and then use that as a backdrop for most of the other um this, the shots. So uh, in this case I had to upload it back up into drawing pad and use the crayon tool and draw that little chair and then I took a screenshot of that or actually it saves into your camera roll and then opened that up as the background in plastic and animated the little girl coming to the chair and sitting on the chair. That was that was fun to do. I'm surprised. I'm glad that it worked out so well. She actually does look like she's moving up and sitting on the chair. That's pretty cool. And then uh, and then I saved that as video into my camera roll and then opened that as the background again into plastic and animated the teacher because in plastic you can't am animate two characters at once. And then that whole little clip was uploaded into iMovie. And um, and then for another example, the one at the very end where uh, the teacher and Alice are sitting there with the checklist and the little pencil with the drawing pad that again I used through drawing pad, I put those in as photos on top of the background and then sized them and stuck them down to create the happy fireworks as I'm calling them to make it look like they're moving. Um, I used stop motion studio, but uh, I created the images for stop motion studio in drawing pad. So I would take the little roller marker tool and do a little bit, save into camera roll, do a little bit, save it to camera roll, do a little bit and so on until I had the fireworks out built. And then I uploaded all of those images into stop motion studio and turned that into a, uh, stop motion animation and then uploaded that into iMovie um, to be put together with all the rest of the building blocks as it felt like Lego Lego movies for Lego for movies um, so it was a fun it was a fun process it was uh, it was fun to think of all the different things that I wanted to add like the light bulb and and stuff um, plastic I really recommend you look it up because it's, it's a lot of fun you get to rig your you can actually even bring in uh, pictures or 
fo from photos or anything and then you what you call it, you rig them and put out little skeleton pieces and then when you're animating you move those um, I highly suggest when you use the timeline that you go second millisecond by millisecond because as you can see in my blooper I hadn't checked um, I think I was making the motion too abrupt in between each second and so you get that really really funny uh, funny arm move moves in my blooper um, so it was it was a fun process I find that multimedia is a interesting you can you can combine music and audio and words and images and it makes a really powerful presentation you can make it really short so if a picture is worth a thousand words I think a video is worth a million and a short video is really worth gold in terms of the message it can communicate I think it made my message in this particular instance perhaps so obvious that you'd think what's the problem aren't all teachers doing that and I'd say no they actually aren't there's a lot <laughs> like I said I have examples from pretty well every single year where obvious things such as processing speed did not get then transferred into the gym where then if processing speed is a problem then obviously one can't throw up a ball in front of oneself and volley it in terms of the volleyball skills that's just not going to happen if you have physical disabilities and and processing speed and yet I saw it happen um anyway so so yeah just I think the power is just that it makes it so clear which is great because then that's sellable that's a message that is takeable takeawayable and and spreadable and um so I think it's really important that we use those in our courses. I, the other thing I want to try to do is I'm hoping to turn this into um, a describe video like Lynn had posted. And I want to see what that's like. I want to try the process and see what that's like. And if and when I finish that, I will, I will post that um, maybe in the off topic links or something so that people can can see it and see what they think and anyway, we'd love your feedback if you have any pointers if you have any other examples if you have thoughts of nah this couldn't happen here uh, please let me know and great it was it was fun working on this project and hope you like it and I can't wait to see everybody else's thanks